come now to verse 7 of 1 Peter 3 in the chain of exhortations concerning submission to the various institutions of the world and husbands are being addressed here after wives were addressed in 3, 1 through 6. So, Father, as men and women attend to these instructions, grant that we would learn and that we would be transformed by the expectations that you have expressed through your word for what it means to be a husband, just like we saw you have expectations for what it means to be a wife. I know I personally, Lord, want so much to be conformed to your will for the good of my wife. And I pray that that would be the heart of all of us men and that women would learn as well from this, both for themselves and their husbands, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read it first. Likewise, and we'll come back to what that's referring to, husbands, Live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. So there's a lot here, and we'll be on this for two or three lab sessions. The first thing I think it's important to remember is that just as we saw with the wives up here in verses 1 to 6, the instructions being given to the husbands are specific instances of instructions that apply to all Christians. And you can see this in a couple of ways. Uh, The first instruction is to honor. And if you've been reading along, you'll remember that just what? Maybe seven verses earlier, no, a few verses earlier, in 2.17, it said, honor everyone, and particularly honor the emperor. So honor everyone is an overarching command to all Christians, which now finds a particular application to the way husbands should honor their wives. So the point of drawing that out is that Every Christian can read this and, yes, understand first some particulars about the way husbands should treat their wives, but they also learn about their own behavior in their various relationships. Another way to recall this fact that this is all a particularization of a general statement is to remember that back in chapter 2, verse 11, It says, I urge you, and this is all Christians, as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against the soul. So that's something for all of us, which means that when we come here to chapter 3, verse 7, and husbands are addressed, they are addressed as, as exiles and sojourners. which means that we um, don't belong to this world primarily. We belong to heaven, and from our citizenship in heaven, we are sent into a particular relationship now. It happens to be husbands and wives this time, and our living in this world is going to be dominated by our concern with the expectations of the Lord that we have in another kingdom. Not with the way the world views marriage, but with the way God views marriage. And we're going to see that now as we we take up this word, likewise. Likewise. What, What is this referring to? If you go back to uh, 2.13, where this section started, remember it started with, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution. And then he started to give particulars. Government, 
citizen emperor, starting in 218. Occupation, slave master, starting in 31. Marriage, husband, wife, starting in 3, actually starting in 3, 1, with husbands in 3, 7. And the reason I point this out is because the likewise, where it says here, likewise husbands, along with citizens and slaves and wives, likewise husbands, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution. So now husbands, you begin to apply this submission to the institution of marriage. And you do it in the way that is particular to your role in that institution. And the key word here that applies to all of these, government, occupation, marriage, is for the Lord's sake. And that's what I was stressing, that we are exiles and sojourners who have another Lord the political and institutional rulers of this world are not our primary Lord. It's for the Lord's sake that we are now sent back into the institutions of the world like marriage. Likewise, you too now, as exiles and sojourners, for the Lord's sake, take up your responsibilities in this institution of marriage. Husbands, Live with your wives in an, in an understanding way, literally according to knowledge. It's a little awkward in English, so translated in an understanding way. What are we to, to know to live properly with our wives? Or what are we to understand to live properly with our wives? And if you just restrict yourself to the context here, the answer would be, well, we need to know what honor is. We need to know what woman is. What's the nature of woman? We need to know what weaker is, what vessel is, what it means that they are heirs with us, what it means that there is grace and life coming to them and to us. What does prayer have to do with all of this? How can prayers be hindered? That's a lot of knowing that we need to have. And of course, we need to know her. That is, how to honor her in particular and in what sense is she, this particular woman, weaker? In what sense is she a particular woman, a vessel? What particularity does she bring to the fact that we are heirs together and particulars of grace and so on? In other words, there's, there's a particular woman in this relationship, not just woman in general, and we need to study our wives because they're all very different. And there is one last thing it would be helpful perhaps to draw attention to when we think of living according to knowledge. Back in chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, we read this. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. Now, there's the opposite of knowledge, right? So, formerly, before we were converted and gained knowledge of Christ and his way of salvation and his person and his action in history and all about um, his work on the cross and the resurrection and today governing the world. Before we were ignorant of that and now we have knowledge of that and all of that knowledge should be brought to bear on our marriages. Live according to this new knowledge that you have. And a particular of that is seen in 1 Thessalonians 4, 4 and 5. Each one of you should know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. So knowing God affects your passions and how you live in honor with your wives. So 
the first thing we've seen is that likewise husbands are adapting to this institution of the world called marriage for the Lord's sake, and we are going to live with her in an understanding way that is according to knowledge of all these things, and particularly knowledge of God that is different from what our former lives were. So that's what we take up next time. What is it to know all of those things?